Thank you so much, Your Grace, for accepting to talk to uh, Castle Building Network. Uh, first, tell us why do the Vatican send the Secretary of State, Cardinal uh, Pietro, to South Sudan after six months of Pope visit? I think uh, basically uh, it came from two sides. First of all, it was the Cardinal himself who has a particular interest for the South Sudan. Uh, keep in mind that in a sense, as he has repeated a number of times uh, that he has been here now for the third time, he came in July last year, was also of course accompanying the Holy Father Pope Francis in his visit in February of this year and came now again in August. Uh, there is a particular interest and, and a particular love, I would say, of Cardinal Pietro Paulin for this country. That is one thing. But it's on the other hand, it's also the Bishop of Malacca who had invited him once again to come and visit and to see the situation in Malakal and what is happening there, especially now as the refugees also from the north are coming in. Yeah, it's good that you mentioned about Malakal and, um, and you visited Malakal recently. What is the situation of the refugees who are fleeing the violence in Sudan and what can the child do? To reduce your suffering. Yes, as, as my list, or the listeners quite well know, I imagine, is that uh, Malakal has basically been suffering of, uh, of, 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 of one disaster after the other. It started first with the civil war, which began at the end of 2013 and, and continued to 2016, uh, or even 18 at times, and, and where people uh, had to flee the city. Uh, they fled into the UN camp there next to the city and fled into the POC camp. So that was, so to say, the first disaster which led to the complete devastation of Malacca, of that city. Basically, very little is left. Then, secondly, there was the flooding. Uh, the flooding that is now maybe coming to an end. Let's be very careful. Water start to recede. Uh, but people had to flee the water and many of them also came to Malacca being one of the few dry places in the area where they could still uh, find some dry land to live on. That was the second disaster. Now on top of that, so to say, came the third problem. The refugees, the returnees coming from North Sudan in a special way from Khartoum. People who had crossed the border, as many of you know, because I'm sure that many of our listeners have family or, or, or friends up there in the north who are going through the same ordeal. People who came from Khartoum, traveled through Kosti and crossed the border at rank to come into South Sudan. And then once they were in rank, rank basically they were stuck because it was very difficult to get out of rank, uh, especially now during the rainy season. And it is there where the Catholic Church in Malakal felt something needs to be done. And it was the Bishop of Malakal, basically together with Sister Helena Balati of the Comboni Sisters, who decided to send up a barge to Rank to pick up people from Rank and to take them to Malakal and then to see how from there to send them further into the country. And that is what happening, what, what happened and what is still ongoing. And this initiative of the Church was then followed by the United Nations and other NGOs. So there's like a quite lively traffic at the moment on the Nile of boats going and coming from rank and bringing people into the city. Uh, and I think it is very good for the Cardinal to be there, to witness this firsthand. To, to see exactly what is happening. Well, it's one thing to read something. It's one thing to listen to something. It's even one thing to see it on TV. But it's another thing to be there, to, to, to talk to the people, to see the suffering, to witness it directly. Because we, we people, we are people of flesh and blood, and we need to have this direct impact of reality in our lives to really understand the suffering and the challenges that are going on. So this visit of, 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 of Pietro, of current Peter Paulin, was a visit of the Church and especially of the Holy Father who wanted to be present with those people who come with all their sufferings, with all their pain to Malakal, to be with them and to 
uh, give a helping hand to them. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think in that sense that visit was also a very important visit, not only for Malaga, not only for those people, but even for the cardinal himself. So to say it has to do with to recognize in these people the suffering Christ, to recognize in these people the Christ who is in need of our help. Yes, Your Grace, we saw you in inside the boat with <laughs> Cardinal. What was the experience look like when you are inside the boat together with those returnees? For me personally, I have to say it was a very moving experience. Also, as some of the listeners know, I've been a long time in Khartoum myself. And in these people, though I didn't know any one of them personally, it, 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 it touched me personally, knowing that these people came from the city that where I self, myself lived for many years. Um, there was one image that remained with me in a particular way that was uh, a woman who was not sitting far from us, and she was sitting there with her child. And the child was quite lively, the child was maybe four or five months old and uh, she was breastfeeding it. But you could see from the mother that she was like dazed. She had gone through too much for her, which I understand very well. She was sitting there basically, let the events take over. She had lost her initiative and she was just going with the flow in a sense. And it was the, 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 the only reason I felt that she was still clinging to life was because of the baby she had with her and that is something that remained with her and with me and what I saw was also in her and this child I saw the suffering Christ to whom we have to show our solidarity you know what, what, what the Holy Scripture also says to us you know what you do have what you have done for the least of my brothers you have done for me and that is something which for me and as a church, even as a church, you know, we have to rediscover that each and every time again to understand what is our role. Yes, our role is to announce the good news. Yes, our role is to speak about justice and solidarity and all these great concepts. But at the end of the day, it's about what did you do for this particular person? What did you do for this particular person who reaches out to you? And that is something which I appreciate very much also that again in the church of Malakal who reached out to each and every one of these persons giving them a way out of a hopeless situation that they came from Khartoum basically as many of you know I mean people would arrive in rank without nothing because they have been robbed of everything and through the church there's a sign of hope through the church there seems to be a new future through the church there seems to be a way out of the darkness and I think that is very important and, and you know therefore I also appreciate very much the work of Caritas in Malakal, the work of the bishop, the work of also in a special way and let me mention that also of Sister Helena Bellati who has always been there and has been a pillar to this church and the people in Malakal. It's good to learn that the church is standing with the returnees and the refugees who are coming from Sudan and now Let's move to the peace in South Sudan generally. Um, we learned that you met with President Selbukir and the first by President Victoria Kumacha. Mm -hmm. Regarding to the peace implementation, what did they tell you? I think that uh, both of them, in one way or another, were saying yeah, what the, that the revitalized peace agreement and the roadmap that followed it, in a sense, is going ahead, however, at a very slow pace and the Cardinal encouraged them to continue on that road and not to give up and to put major effort into it in order that this country really comes to the peace that each and every one of us is desiring so much. I thought in the sermon that, the, that Cardinal Pierre Paulin gave in Rundbeck, I think he said something very important. Uh, or was it maybe even the bishop, uh, Carlasaro, who said, I think it was the bishop who said, in the, in the visit of Cardinal Parolin, we, speaking of the church in Rumbek, which could also speak of the church in South Sudan, we understand that we are not just a local church limited to a local community, but that we are part of a universal church, that we are not just uh, 
members of a particular ethnic group or tribe or whatever, but that we are part of a new family of God which goes beyond our ethnic or tribal differences and identity. I think that is very important. That is also very important for the country as such. It is about uh, realizing that you know, South Sudan defines itself as the youngest nation on this earth. But in many ways you may ask yourself, what is it exactly, nation? What does that mean? Is this purely a piece of land with some borders around it? The nation is about a group of people that come together and together as one people put their shoulders under that country, under, under that new country of South Sudan and take a responsibility. We are still in a process of nation building and still not there yet. And I do think that this whole concept, I think, which was Bishop Carlos Sare, if I'm not mistaken, who said that, and it was also really present already in the, in the sermon of, Car of the Cardinal, this whole thing of if we want to be a nation, as we say, we are the youngest nation, we South Sudanese, but what is that exactly, South Sudanese? What is that exactly, nation of South Sudan? We can only be that once we are able to go beyond our ethnic identity and find a new identity in the country that we all cherish so much. All of you remember how much we desired to have that independent country in 2011 and how all of us were convinced, oh, now this is the promised land, this will be it and we will build up this country.